Hey guys, it's Mark from Park Flores RC. Today, we are taking a second look at the Traxxas Raptor R. So I've been running this truck for about a week. Every day after work, I've been going with Diane. We've been filming. I've been doing a lot of um, driving, and I have some second thoughts on the truck. We can go, we're going to go over some of the problems that this truck had. We're also going to go through some of the upgrades I did and the differences that it made. So the first thing that happened to this truck after driving it, we're driving it in 80 degree weather and we were getting a lot of thermal shutdowns halfway through the pack. So that is with stock gearing. So if you plan on, uh, on using the optional gearing it comes with in 80 degree weather, it's not even an option. So we didn't really like that too much. So what did I do? I actually went and I installed a VXL 4S speed control. This is the same speed control that comes in a Max. It's rated for 4S, but this motor is not. So even though we're putting a 4S ESC in here, we still want to run 3S. The benefit of this is that no matter what gearing you throw at this thing, you're not going to thermal shut down. The motor also runs about 20 degrees cooler with this speed control, believe it or not. Um, even with that, this will run at 194 degrees, which is a little bit too high. You want a, a motor no, no more than 180 degrees. Um, otherwise, you're going to run into problems ruining your windings and magnets over time. So you're definitely going to want to get a 28,000 RPM McLaren uh, motor fan. You want to install that on the motor. That's going to help you out. The, the other thing we did is the handling was bothering me. So the stock kit, a fully new car, um, basically comes out of the box with a lot of clips in the standard slash shocks. They're basically not designed for this long chassis. They're just the standard slash shocks that they're recycling. And because they couldn't handle the weight of the car, they would sag a lot. They, from the factory, they added a lot of clips. So they're adding a lot of clips to keep the, the, the tension high, and you, it limits the movement of the shock. What we did here is we went to the GT shocks that Traxxas has. These are a nice upgrade. Um, they have more volume, they have titanium shock shafts, uh, they have uh, definitely wider springs, and they're definitely a better shock. You, you, they're subtle, you know, the subtle upgrades in the GT shock makes a huge difference in performance uh, in the handling department. So if you have the money, I would definitely upgrade to GT shocks. Um, the total upgrade should be like under 70 bucks with springs. We chose VG Racing Springs. They're the stiffest springs you can buy. And that's just to handle the extra weight of this car. VG Racing is an American company. Now their springs don't work really that <clears throat> well on all the cars that they make springs for, but on this particular car they work. And I would highly recommend using VG Springs, VG Racing Springs on GT, uh, GT shocks from Traxxas. That is a significant um, upgrade for this car. The handling, the high speed handling, I should say, went up tremendously. You're able to do a lot more things with the car um, when you have GT shocks on them versus stock. So that is one upgrade. If you're going to get one upgrade for the car, I would do the shocks first and I would do the speed control second. The one thing I want to note on this car that Traxxas, uh, I give them a lot of credit for, are the tires. Now, the tires are not that, it's not, you, you know, you basically think it's just an entry level tire and, uh, you know, they're kind of like plain and boring and all that. But what they did was they did something very smart. The compound, the rubber compound on these tires are much harder than a regular uh, regular um, 10 scale tire. Um, even their slash, this is harder. The benefit of that is it's, the car slides a lot and because the car is long, instead of traction rolling, the car will drive more like a real truck. So they, they put a lot of thought into the tread design and the compound of this rubber. And I'll tell you, that I got to give them credit because I tried other tires on the car. Even though it had more grip, the car didn't really feel right. It wasn't driving scale. It was traction rolling on some of those tires from Proline. I just didn't like the way it drove with them. When I put these back on, um, between the compound, the size, and the shape of them, it just really works. So I haven't found, found a better tire for this car uh, than the actual stock tire. The other thing I wanted to go over with you quickly is how well this car jumps. We took this out to the local park. We brought a ramp with us, and I'm happy to say the car jumps really neutral, very easy to jump. It, it gets a lot of air on a lot of throttle. It's not twitchy in the air, very easy to correct, and uh, really addicting. One of the good things about this car, because of the long chassis, it's a lot more stable in the air. And, um, I definitely recommend you guys try out some jumping with the car.
All right, now to really ring this car out and test it for every bit of durability that this car has, we took this to a skate park. Skate park is basically a half pipe made out of full concrete. Now concrete is the enemy of plastic. Even small tiny hits are gonna definitely hurt the car, most cars. Now this car, we didn't break any part on the chassis itself. Nothing on this car that you see here was broken. The only thing that we broke running it in a half pipe was the front lens cracked off on the front of the car, which was not a big deal. And the rear, uh, the rear uh, clip uh, basically cracked off here. It's just a $5 part. We're actually gonna replace that this week. But other than that, the car really withstood a true beating. And the, you know, running a car in a half pipe, if it could withstand very, very hard running, I mean, on a three cell battery, full throttle, going up and down, diving into the bowl, jumping out of it, um, really just shows how, how durable uh, this car is. This, if somebody asked me the main point of this car, would be the durability. The durability sets this car apart from a lot of other cars in the Traxxas line. Even though they are durable, this is going to be right up there with the most durable of them. Um, Max, the Traxxas Max is probably the most um, durable car up until now. I think this is going to be a, a, have a slight edge over the Max only because you have front and rear bumpers that span the width of the suspension components. So if you're going in reverse or you're going forward, you have full protection of all the drivetrain components in the suspension. And that is really where you sustain a lot of the damage. This thing has hit at full speed, um, concrete sidewalks and all kinds of objects, trees and roots and all that, and nothing happened to the car. Not even, there's no hint of any damage on any part of the car. A lot of the cars, if you run them really hard, the universals, you'll see them torqued. There's nothing on this. This is, they're completely level and there's no damage to any part of the car. Um, so I definitely give Traxxas a lot of credit for not only the 100% scale looks of the Raptor R body, but combining that with the extreme heavy duty driveline kit and putting it in as stock. That was a very, very smart move by Traxxas and they are gonna definitely <clears throat> um, see the benefits of that. The, and the reason why they, in my opinion, as a hobby shop owner, they're going to see long-term benefits from that because the, when you have a durable car, the consumer satisfaction goes up exponentially. And what that does is it actually inspires um, people to spend more money on the car. As far as instead of buying broken parts, now they put all their money into upgrades. The other thing it does is when people take their car out and they test the car, let's say they have a friend or a relative and they see how durable the car is that it doesn't break. Um, they tend to go um, and buy one. So the durability of this car is, is the main selling point, in my opinion. And Traxxas has a real winner on their hands. This was a very well thought out car, very, very good design. Um, they took the existing slash um, drivetrain components and they just enhanced them. And they took it, you know, for 2023. They didn't just um, let the truck or let the platform uh, stay stale. They really put a lot of thought into this. And it was a very smart move from Traxxas.